So anyway, I think the toughest hitters that I faced uh, was, to me, was Rod Carew. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, you know, you get two strikes on him, he choke up, he just try to bat the ball, slap the ball, yeah. you know, protect the plate, and that's what he would do. And then when you make a mistake, <coughs> you know, he'd whack you. So, and then uh, with Pete Rose, uh, somebody sent me a fan that, of uh, uh, facing Pete, because I thought Pete Rose, because I really concentrated, because I knew he was a great hitter, but I really concentrated him, but I had the best record or batting average. In other words, he didn't hit the a, a pitcher that faced him 25 or more times in the big leagues. I had, he had the uh, worst batting average against a starting pitcher, that was me. So I was, I was kind of like surprised about it because I, you know, of course I always worked Pete hard and I thought he always, uh, you know, hit me better than he did. Yeah. He actually didn't. And I really, like, really had great concentration pitching against him because I knew how good a hitter he was. And I had great success, apparently, against him. So, the Rock Carew to me was probably uh, the best hitter. And actually, Tony Oliva would have been a, the best hitter, I think, that I ever would have seen in Major League Baseball up until he hurt his leg. Because he had more power, had could run, and actually, I think he would have been a shoe-in Hall of Famer as good as hitter as he was. And he was a better hitter, I thought, than uh, Rod Carew. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let, me, let me ask you this. Who was the person that you most dominated? All the hitters. <laughs> <laughs> ask that one more time. Who, who was the, the, the person that you most dominated? Uh, I mean, I remember... 76 when we were with the A's and you went on that streak, what was it, like four or five consecutive shutouts and whatever it was, 30-some, 40 innings. Yeah, here's a good one, which I didn't realize. Um, I was in, in the year I won 20 games with Baltimore. Uh, Fred White, the radio announcer for the Kansas City Royals, came and gave me an interview and uh, he told me that, uh, <laughs> that you know, that uh, George Brett, if he'd have gotten a hit off of me, he would have won an American League batting title. And, and I didn't know that, but he said George Brett was like 0 for 22 against me in 1975. If he'd have gotten one hit off of me out of those 22 at bats, he would have won the, National, the American League batting title. Yeah, yeah. But I had apparently I had pretty good success against you know George Brett. And uh, the team I beat the most, I think I was 13 and 0 against the Cleveland Indians in my career. Yeah. So I threw my glove on the field. For some reason, I just beat Cleveland. So it was uh, interesting. Is there any explanation as to why stuff like that happens? You know, baseball is very strange that way. Yeah, uh, you have good, you have good success <laughs> against certain hitters. You have good success against certain teams. There's some teams that you struggle with. Uh, it's not as easy. It's not that you're throwing any differently. It's sometimes they adapt and, you know, uh, maybe they caught something, you know, in, your, in my repertoire of my pitches. Maybe they picked up something. And because uh, hitters do study that. You know, a lot of times hitters can, or a pitcher can be on the mound. It moves his hand a little bit. If they see it, a hitter, they know it's going to be a breaking ball. Okay. And a lot of times, if you see a pitcher that doesn't move his hands or doesn't do anything, what you really try to do as a pitcher, do the same thing over and over. But you throw a breaking ball, a fastball, give them that same motion that you're doing something in the glove. You just and then a lot of hit pitchers will just stay with the fastball and not move anything. Then when they're going to throw a breaking ball, they start moving their hands, and that gives it away. These hitters pick up all this, and the coaches pick this up. They tell the hitters, hey, uh, you know, once you see him moving his hand, it's it's going to be a breaking ball. Okay. You see him not moving his hands, it's going to be a fastball. So, you know, a lot of little things that they pick up that you hear of the hitters when, they, when they're when they talking on the bench. Uh, you know, they, uh, look, look how he has his hand. Look how he's holding his hand. Holds it this way on a breaking ball. Holds it this way on a fastball. So, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of science that goes on when you're competing against professional guys.